uh, which libraries have you already tried for learning to rank tasks? Uh, why did you prefer using one instead of others? Pros and cons if there are. So to answer this question, we prepared another set of slides and we are going to go through these libraries that will introduce the topic and then Ilaria will continue with some observations on, on the work that we've been doing, exploring additional solutions. So this is a list of currently available libraries for training learning to rank models. Some of them are quite popular. Others, of course, are the output of um, are the output of um, academic work. So it's the output of uh, research papers and may not be production ready, but all of them are available. Now, the let's let's give an overview of the, the two we've been using with our clients, and then Ilaria will present you also uh, other technologies we are exploring. So Ranklib has been the first we've been using to implement learning to rank and specifically to train learning to rank model back in early 2016. Specifically, it offers you the is, is an open source library. Uh, currently, uh, you'll find it in SVN in SourceForge, and there's like also a, a GitHub porting for that. And there are like various algorithms supported to train learning to rank models. At the time we used this library, we were interested in Lambda Mart, which was the state of the art for learning to rank models. But there are also other, other opportunities with this library. So our, our experience has been, first of all, that has been initially positive because it's anyways Lambda Martin supported, it works pretty well. And it's relatively easy to use. But the it's, it's not really a library, it's more like a command line interface. It's a command line application effectively. So you need to run it separately and you need to then train your model and then traduce, translate your model to like a a format such as JSON, for example, if, if you're interested. I mean, the output was XML, or even a, one of the possible outputs was XML. And the, there is, so it's written in Java, there is minimal test coverage. It, it's clearly the output of various like research papers and reproducibility tracks, uh, not meant to be production ready. It's on SVN, which may not be ideal nowadays, and the community is quite small. I'm I myself part of the community. I've been contributed some bug fix and it's the community is still active. So you'll see that the latest release has been in December and it's 2.15 uh, 2 the version. Uh, still, when we addressed the problem more recently and specifically in a Python kind of ecosystem, we find more useful and actually a little bit like uh, better effectively and more solid uh, XGBoost. So XGBoost is an optimized distributed gradient boosting library. It is written in Python and it is actually uh, quite popular in the Python ecosystem. So it implements various algorithms as well. So like Ranklib, XGBoost implements like a lot of different algorithms. Most of them are based on gradient boosting and are tree based. And the it's possible to, to run uh, code of XGBoost in like distributed environments and actually uh, it's, very, and it's very solid from performance perspective. We never had a problem with that, even training on mm, millions of training sample. So some positive and actually some, some points we, we got from our experience. So first of all, again, uh, we were interested in Lambda Mart at the time, roughly to, in the beginning of 2018, when we mm, transitioned to XGBoost for projects for our clients. And it's relatively easy to use as well. It's a library, so it's quite easy to integrate XGBoost in your Python project. And the project is huge. Test seems to have quite a good coverage, and it's possible to find this code on GitHub. 
it's very popular and there's a huge community behind it. So uh, it actually was a positive experience, experience and we got um, quite nice improvements over the usage we had with RankLib. Now passing to Ilaria and she she's going to drive to other learning to rank libraries as observations. Hi, good evening all. My name is Ilaria. I'm an information retrieval machine learning engineer at SIS. As mentioned by Alessandro, there are a lot of uh, later learning, um, learning to rank uh, open source libraries. And actually, we have not already explored them in practice and in details, but we have had it to how to do list their study and the exploration to deal with the comparison between them and make a, a list of um, pros and cons. Actually, some learning to rank libraries have important limitations. First of all, uh, they were developed for a small data set and do not scale well to massive training examples that are common in the real world applications. Second, they have very limited support for uh, sparse features and they require extensive feature engineering uh, techniques to handle um, um, textual features. Third, they do not support the recent advances in unbiased learning to rank. To address these gaps, uh, uh, a new deep learning li library named TensorFlow Ranking has been recently developed. So since uh, deep uh, neural networks have become very popular in recent years, we would like to explore in depth neural learning to rank and especially this library. Okay, today I will give you just an overview of it in broad terms, but we will address a detailed study and implementation of this library in our future project. TensorFlow Ranking is a library developed by Google's uh, AI department on the basis of TensorFlow. It is an open source deep learning library for learning to rank uh, uh, that was developed to support large scale application with millions or billions of training examples. Uh, this library is, is fast and easy to use and it is openly available on GitHub uh, repository. So if you are interested, you can explore it through the link below. It is easy to implement with few lines of code and creates high quality ranking models. It is flexible and high configurable. In fact, the unified frameworks uh, give us the ability to evaluate and choose among um, an array of different ranking models within a single library. Uh, this library supports a wide range of standard point-wise, pair-wise, list-wise loss function, and it supports multiple learning to rank algorithms. Related to uh, ranking losses, there are several ranking metrics, such as NDCG or uh, mean reciprocal rank. So uh, what are the additional components that this library offer? Um, it is fully integrated with the rest of TensorFlow ecosystem. In particular, it is um, compatible with Tensor, TensorBoard, that is an open source uh, uh, TensorFlow visualization dash dashboard that can be used to visualize ranking metrics at training time and pick the best model. Uh, TensorFlow linking library is also able to take advantage of the feature engineering functionality uh, of TensorFlow that enables the handling of textual features using text embeddings. Uh, models built on standard learning to rank approaches score document using univariate function, which doesn't factor uh, in the relevance of other document in a result list. In this case, uh, um, multi-item uh, uh, scoring involves uh, using multivariate uh, scoring function to produce an ordering of entire result list. So the library supports a novel scoring mechanism uh, known as a group-wise scoring function, wherein uh, multiple items can be scored jointly. Then some algorithms don't directly optimize uh, ranking metrics. And in this case, uh, Lambda loss uh, um, is a framework that uh, addresses the ranking metric opt optimization problem using a principal probabilistic approach. And uh, also we know that uh, there are a lot of possible biases in a learning to rank scenario to deal with. Uh, in general, uh, it means obtaining a learning to rank model that it's not objective or unbalanced. 
And one example can be that um, a user are less likely to exam or click items at the lowest position of the result list. And ignoring this uh, type of bias, I think the name is click bias, when, uh, when training a learning to rank model may lead to a model with less generalization capacity and inaccurate quality uh, measurement. Uh, this library can handle such bias biases. Uh, in relevance level, computing an inverse propensity weights for each position in the rank list. Anyway, we will examine in depth all these points in future blogs, so check out our uh, website to not uh, miss them. Finally, um, finally, can be useful to summarize just the main differences between XGBoost and TensorFlow. XGBoost implements learning to rank using uh, three based frameworks, while uh, uh, TensorFlow using a, a deep neural network. If you feed a neural network with a missing data, you probably hand it with error because uh, the neural network training assume a, a valid value for each uh, input variable. Uh, XGBoost, on the other hand, uh, has its own way to deal with missing data. Deep learning models are currently more expensive in terms of time and they need a lot of computing resources. On the other hand, if you only have a limited amount of data, XGBoost can be trained on a less expensive uh, uh, multi-core uh, CPU and converge in less time, achieving uh, similar uh, results. XGBoost is limited in the way uh, it can be uh, parallelized, making it uh, uh, short in the amount of data it can process. So in the end, for smaller data set, XGBoost typically converts faster and with smaller error. However, with neural network, uh, it is usually the more the better. So uh, TensorFlow can deal with a massive uh, data set uh, and uh, in fact is popular for uh, large scale training. We are going to follow up with some blog posts and detailing a little bit more about uh, vector-based search and how you can do that in Elasticsearch and Apache Solar and also more details about the Lucene implementation. Thank you very much. It's been our pleasure. And please uh, be sure you are registered to the user group because we are going to have uh, more meetups and the recordings will be shared soon. Uh, recordings and slides where uh, were relevant. So have a nice evening and see you. Bye-bye.